Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast. Today is Monday, September 30th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NFL games. Look ahead to tonight's Monday night game between the Bengals and the Steelers. College football. Go over the scores from the weekend. Baseball regular season is a close and managers have been fired. We'll get to that. WNBA Finals Game 1, we'll talk about the result of that and look ahead a little bit to Game 2 and my best bet of the day. Okay, we're going to start with the NFL. We're going to go through those games and um, go over the scores and whatnot. Eagles over the Packers, 3-4-27. We discussed that on Friday's podcast. Giants over the Redskins, 24-3. Daniel Jones, not as good as he was against the Bucks. Case Keenum benched for Dwayne Haskins. And Haskins really didn't do anything. Certainly didn't help that he didn't have Terry McLaurin, their number one receiver, and their best all lineman in Brandon Scherf was out as well. Obviously, Trent Williams is holding out for the Redskins. So, Redskins, a couple key losses, came back to bite them. Or who knows, maybe this game would have been more competitive. Titans over the Falcons, 24-10. to This was a pretty big upset, in my opinion. Um, this shows that Atlanta might just not be good. Tennessee... Is a team that might be better than I expected. Patriots over the Bills, 16 to 10. Pats are still undefeated. Buffalo had chances to win the game, but couldn't get the job done. Chiefs over the Lions, 34 30. A shootout. Good job on the Lions, who are um, actually not as bad as probably I thought they were. So give them credit for like hanging with one of the best teams in the league. Raiders over the Colts, 31 24. This was another big upset. Derek Carr looked pretty good. And a couple of receivers and tight ends broke out in this game. Jacoby Brissett, meanwhile, looked like a quarterback. That's a backup quarterback. Chargers over the Dolphins, 30-10. to What did you expect there? Browns over the Ravens, 40-25. to An impressive win for the Browns. 2-2 two and two on the year now. Ravens obviously down to 2-2 two and two as well. Panthers over the Texans, 16-10. to Kyle Allen... Had another fine day, but it was the defenses that really stood up in this game. The Sean Watson had a chance for a Hail Mary there at the end, but couldn't get it done. Buccaneers over the Rams, 55-10. to A very impressive win for the Bucs, scoring a whopping 55 points on them. Jared Goff had a bad game if you were watching it up close, but he had a good in- game in terms of fantasy. 45 of 68, 517 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. The three interceptions for Goff really hurts them. Seahawks over to Cardinals, 27-10. The Seahawks bounce back from their loss against the Saints. Cardinals still win this. Bears over to Vikings, 16 to 6. Yet again, Kirk Cousins can't get, win a big game to save his life. Meanwhile, Mitch Trubisky's out with a shoulder injury, and he'll be missing a few weeks. It looks like Jaguars over to Broncos, 26-14. Jaguars back to 500. Broncos still win this on the year. Saints with a big 12-10 win over the Cowboys. Cowboys had a chance to uh, get a Hail Mary there at the end for the win and cover, but couldn't get the job done. Credit to the Saints defense for really stepping up their game, especially without Drew Brees. Not that Teddy Bridgewater is anything special, but he made some plays too, and their special teams really kicked ass in this game with those four field goals. So now you have the Steelers hosting the Bengals. Steelers favored by 3.5. The over-under is 45.5. I think the Steelers laying the points is the right move here. Andy Dalton in prime time, especially on the road, is terrible. And that's the sole reason why I'm taking the Steelers here, even though it's Mason Rudolph, not um, Ben Roethlisberger. But Rudolph at home, I think, will be better. Prime time is a little pressure. I think all the pressure in the world's on the Steelers. Their season's on the line here, it looks like. And um, they have to win this game. Like, there's no other world around it. If you lose to Andy Dalton in prime time, you should be ashamed of yourself. So the Steelers... I think we'll go out there and get like a 26-16 victory tonight. I think they'll win by double digits. Now I'll switch over to the college gridiron. I'll go over to games from Friday and Saturday. Penn State over Maryland, 59-0. Very impressive win for Penn State. Maryland looks like they're a fraud. Duke over Virginia Tech, 45-10. A very impressive win for Duke. Maybe they're a surprise bowl team this year. Air Force over San Jose State, 41-24. Let down spot for San Jose State. Good win for Air Force. Not looking ahead to Navy. Arizona State upsets number 15, Cal 24-17. I got that right. And obviously, um, 
Herm Edwards and company get the job done on the road. Their defense is very good. Saturday games, number six, Oklahoma over Texas Tech, 55-16. to A nice win for Oklahoma. Obviously a game that they have to have. Number eight, Wisconsin over Northwestern, 24-15. I thought Northwestern recovered. They did. A little bit of a letdown from Wisconsin, predictable, but a win's a win. That's all that matters in college football, really. Number 14, Iowa over Middle Tennessee, 48-3. Good job by the Hawkeyes for dominating. Number 20, Michigan over Rutgers, 52-0. Good bounce back win for Michigan after that dreadful loss to Wisconsin. Number 23, Texas A&M over Arkansas, 31-27 in Dallas. Kind of a trap game there, but um, hey, they hung on. Syracuse over Holy Cross, 41-3. Vanderbilt over Northern Illinois, 24-18. That was an upset I got wrong, but Northern Illinois covered. TCU over Kansas, 51-14. Good bounce back win for TCU. Toledo over BYU, 28-24, an upset pick that I got correct. Miami of Ohio over Buffalo, 34-20. So a good win for Miami of Ohio. And the letdown loss for Buffalo. Western Michigan over Central Michigan, 31-15. Pitt over Delaware, 17-14. I knew that game would be close. Delaware's a good FCS team. Pitt, obviously, letdown spot after the big win over UCF. Number one, Clemson over North Carolina, 21-20. Mac Brown decides to go for two, and they don't get it. I'm going to defend Mac Brown for that decision. That was the right decision to do instead of just go to overtime. And it, say you take the lead there, you just have to force Clemson um, – into uh, getting some stops and uh, off the field pretty much. So I'm going to defend Mac Brown for that decision. I have no problem with him going for two points there at the end. Number two, Alabama over Ole Miss, 59-31. A very good win for the Crimson Tide. They rolled to the win, although Ole Miss got the cover, the easy cover. Number 10, Notre Dame over Virginia. Eight, number 18, Virginia, 35-20. An impressive win for Notre Dame. Good bounce back win. Number 17, Washington over number 21, USC, 28-14. Number 25, Michigan State over Indiana, 40-31. So, Michigan State had a scare against Indiana, but they end up coming away with the win. I knew they would have that scare because they have Ohio State this week. We'll get to guess the lines in a couple minutes. And I was right about Indiana covering. FAU over Charlotte, 45-27. Temple over Georgia Tech, 24-2. Wake over BC, 27-24. BC covered for me, but they didn't get the outright victory. Baylor over Iowa State, 23-21. That was a good pick by me, but Baylor. Minnesota over Purdue, 38-31. This was one of my whiffs. This game was a blowout early. Purdue made it interesting late. Appalachian State over Coastal Carolina, 56-37. So it looks like that um, Coastal's a team that can score. UMass over Akron, 37-29. The battle of... Dog shit teams. Number 9, Florida over Towson, 38 nothing. SMU over UCF, 48-21. Now SMU's ranked. Cincinnati over Marshall, 52-14. Liberty over New Mexico, 17-10. East Carolina over Old Dominion, 24-21. Arkansas State over Trey, 50-43. Louisiana over Georgia Southern, 37-24. So the Asian Cajuns look like they're for real. And obviously Arkansas State out there in the Sun Belt. Continuing their good momentum. Number 7, Auburn over Mississippi State, 56-23. I was right on that side. Yikes is Mississippi State's defense worse than I thought. 22, UCF over UConn, 56-21. So UConn actually covers there. Oklahoma State over number 24, Kansas State, 26-13. So I was right about the Cowboys in that spot. Yale Monroe over South Alabama, 30-17. Texas State over Nichols, 24-3. Southern Miss over UTEP, 31-13. Western Kentucky over UAB, 20-13. Louisiana Tech over Rice, 23-20 in overtime. So credit to Rice for hanging around, trying to get the first win. Stanford over Oregon State, 31-28. Oregon State got the cover, but not the win. Big win for Stanford to uh, try to salvage their season a little bit as they could possibly make a bowl. Number five, Ohio State over Nebraska, 48-7. Pure dominance from the Buckeyes in that game. And boy, did we overrate Nebraska before the season. Like, we as in the media, even myself. I was down on Nebraska, but they're even worse than I even thought. Florida State over NC State, 31-13. South Carolina over Kentucky, 24-7. Utah State over Colorado State, 34-24. Wyoming over UNLV, 53-17. Fresno State over New Mexico State, 30-17. 
Houston over North Texas, 46-25 in their first game without De'Ara King. So maybe Houston turns their year around. Number 19, Utah over Washington State, 38-13. Arizona over UCLA, 20-17, so UCLA covers. And Hawaii over Nevada, 54-3. Yikes, that was a whiff. Taking Nevada minus the points. Okay, we'll switch over to baseball now. I'm just going to go over the final day's regular season results, and then I'm going to discuss what's to come for the playoffs within the wild card games and um, other possibilities. Um, so yesterday, Rangers over the Yankees 6-1. to Rangers close out um, their ballpark with the win before they move, and the Yankees get ready for October, so they weren't really trying. Red Sox over to Orioles 5-4. to Red Sox close out their disappointing season at 84 and 78, Baltimore 54 and 108. By the way, Rangers finished the year at 78 and 84, Yankees 103 and 59. So Yankees three win improvement from last year sans all these injuries. Nationals over the Indians 8 to 2. Washington finishes the year 93 and 69, and so does the Indians ironically enough. So 93 wins and you're not even in the playoffs. Hmm. Kind of rare for this year. I think that win total is kind of inflated in a weird way because of the bad competition. That's the same you could argue with the Yankees win total in a weird way and the Twins because of the bad teams all those that those three teams had to face in the, that division with the Orioles and the Royals and the Tigers, especially those three. White Sox and Blue Jays are a little bit better than those three teams I just listed. But um, And then in Houston's case with their deflated win total is the Mariners who are just as atrocious as the likes of the Blue Jays and the White Sox and the Orioles. They're kind of, like, right there, too. So those three teams probably have inflated win totals because of um, the um, bad teams in their respective divisions. So 93 wins for the Indians, and they don't even make the playoffs. Dodgers over the Giants, 9 nothing. Dodgers get a franchise record 106 wins. San Francisco finishes the season a disappointing 77-85 in Bruce Bochy's final year. Reds over the Pirates 3-1. to Cincinnati finishes the year at 75-87. Pittsburgh 69-93. So Pittsburgh finishes in last in that division. I'll talk about more about them in a couple of minutes. Marlins over the Phillies 4-3. to So the Phillies don't even finish 5. Oh, no. They have... Uh, 81 and 81, very disappointing. 81 and 81 for Bryce Harper and the Phillies. Miami 57 and 105, so they still eclipse the 100 loss mark. Astros over the Angels 8 to 5. Houston finishes at 107 and 55. LA 72 and 90, so they finish four games better than the Yankees. And we'll talk about the uh, Angels in a few minutes as well. Blue Jays over the Rays, 8-3. to three. Blue Jays showed some promise this year, 67-95. and 95. That's not a great record, but they did show some signs later in the year with their young kids. And Tampa Bay, 96-66, and 66, which is an incredible season for the Rays. Mets over Braves, 7-6 in 11 innings on a walk-off three-run home run by Dominic Smith. Mets finished the year at 86-76. and 76. Think about that. Ten games over 500, and they didn't make the playoffs in the National League. They would have been a lot better if they had a competent bullpen and a competent manager. And the Braves finished 97-65, and so a good year for the Braves. I think I had them a little lower than that, maybe 93 wins, but 97 is a good job by that team. The White Sox defeat the Tigers 5-3. The White Sox avoid 100 losses. They go 72-89. and Wow, so they avoid 90 losses, so that's pretty good for them and then uh Detroit 47 and 114 so I guess the game got rained out between those two teams and they're just not gonna make it up so um 47 and 114 and 72 and 89 so we judge normally by wins than losses so um in theory it'd be 72 and 90 and 47 and 115 I think that was the Tigers Diamondbacks over the Padres won nothing. The Diamondbacks finished at 85 and 77. So a good year for the Diamondbacks, although it doesn't result in the playoff appearance. Still a good year for the, that team. 
Padres 70 92. So a very dismal year for San Diego after signing Manny Machado. Cardinals over to Cubs 9 nothing. Cardinals win the Central 91 and 71 on the year. And they clinched it on the final day of the season, which was yesterday. Cubs finished a disappointing 84 and 78. So the Cubs and the Red Sox finished with the same record. So that's interesting. Royals over the Twins 5 to 4. Royals finish 59 and 103. Minnesota 101 and 61. Royals got a walk off. Um, sacrifice fly by uh, Brett Phillips after Ryan O'Hearn hit a RBI double in that game to uh, tie it up. On Tuesday, you have the NL Wild Card game: Brewers and the Nats from Washington. Max Scherzer's going for the Nats. We don't know who's going for the Brewers yet. And then on. Wednesday on ESPN, AL Rays Athletics from Oakland Coliseum. So it's kind of an, a weird time for that team. 5 p.m. Pacific. So let's see if that has any effect in the game because you could possibly see like shadows and the sun going down. That always affects guys in the outfield, especially in that big outfield in Oakland. Good luck to those outfielders in that game. Managerial firings, there's three I want to get into. First one, the most important one. This was inevitable, probably inevitable for a week now. The Joe Madden era in Chicago is over. They fired him after five years. After finishing a disappointing 84 and 78 this year, they pulled the plug. That sweep at Wrigley Field against the Cardinals is probably the season's death blow for them when Kimbrell gave up those back to back home runs to the Cardinals. And, like I said, this is one we saw coming. There's an argument to be made that he should have been let go last year, but I disagree with that because who would fire a manager two years after breaking the longest drought in the history of sports? So I can't really kill him for not firing him last year, but now is the time. Time it's run its course, and Madden will have an opportunity elsewhere. And the place where I think he will manage will be Los Angeles because – the Angels fired Brad Ausmus, and Ken Rosenthal has been reporting for a couple days now that um, the Angels are heavily pursuing Joe Madden to replace Ausmus, and I think that's a done deal, but nobody's reporting it. So there you have it from me. Uh, Joe Madden will be your next Los Angeles Angels manager. Bob Nightingale said that it's not a lot he's going to get the job, but Bob Nightingale's a, a jinx as we all know so uh now we know it's probably a done deal that um Madden will be headed to Anaheim to be Mike Trout's manager so that's interesting and Austin is fired after one season by the way one and Clint Hurdle got fired from the Pirates after finishing disappointing 69 wins that team wasn't expected to do much I even picked them to finish in last place before the season but they fired him for the simple reason of time has run its course. So he's gone. He did a nice job in his tenure. He got some teams to overachieve. The 2012 year, I remember um, McCutcheon. That was his breakout year in Pittsburgh. That team almost made the playoffs. They had a second half collapse. And then in 13, they hosted the wild card game. We all remember the Cueto thing. And they beat the Reds in that game. 2014, they lost at home against Madison Bumgarner and the Giants. I think that was Garrett Cole that started that game. And then Cole started against Jake Arrieta and the Cubs in 15, and they ran into the Cubs, and the Cubs were playing really well. So he had some good Pirates teams that um, made some uh, playoff games and whatnot. But And then they obviously were in a five-game series against the Cardinals in 13, and then they lost in four, I believe to uh, that Cardinals team that ended up um, winning the NL pennant and losing to the Red Sox in six. So Clint Hurdle did a nice job, but time has run its course. And I actually thought the other day who were managers that might get fired actually had Hurdle in my mind. And it's weird because uh, it was reported the other day that Clint Hurdle said that uh, he was coming back and he was told he was coming back, but that ended up being a lie. So sometimes people lie to the media. You never know. WNBA playoffs, the finals began. Game one was yesterday. Mystics over to Sun, 95-86. Elena Deladon 
was awesome. 22 points, 10 rebounds. She obviously is awesome, as I keep saying over and over and over. Courtney Williams was awesome for the Sun, 29 points. Alyssa Thomas had a nice game, 20 points, 6 boards, 6 assists. That's a great all-around game for her. Jaquel Jones had 12. Strickland at 13 for UConn or Connecticut. Christy Tolver at 18. That's good that they're actually starting her. And then uh, Elise Messiman comes off the bench now. She had 11. Nikita Cloud had 21. Ashley Atkins had 21. Tolliver at 18, as I mentioned. So a good all-around performance by the Mystics. Game 2, obviously, tomorrow night. We'll pick it on tomorrow's podcast. Guess the lines. Week number 6, college football. I have not looked at the lines yet, so this is going to be quite interesting. And we're obviously going to start with Thursday night. You have Georgia Southern at South Alabama. And I have the Eagles laying 11.5 points to South Alabama, and Georgia Southern is laying 11.5 points, and again, my guess was 11.5, so one for one so far, but guess the lines. That's a good start to this segment of the show. Temple is at East Carolina. East Carolina finally got a win the other day. Temple, easy win over Georgia Tech. I think Temple is laying 7 on the road at East Carolina. And Temple's laying 11.5. So the same number that Georgia Southern's laying as is Temple. Next up is UCF at Cincinnati. I have UCF laying 6.5 on the road. And they're laying only 4.5. So I'm surprised that... uh. This is lower than I thought. Hmm. This has me really uh, thinking a little bit about what side I'm going to go here. But I was kind of thinking this side anyway, even though I had the number at 6.5. It's 4.5. And and it opened at 3. Hmm. So it's trending the opposite way of what I'm feeling right now. So that's very interesting. We'll see if my mind changes by the end of the week. Um. New Mexico at San Jose State. I have New Mexico laying 11 on the road. And San Jose State's giving 7. That's ridiculous. San Jose State is terrible. Terrible. That is the worst line of the year. My goodness. That's terrible. All right. Utah State is at number 5, LSU. LSU, I have laying 28 points. At home against the unimproved team from the Mountain West. And LSU is laying 26. All right, Oklahoma at Kansas. I have Oklahoma by 33.5 at Kansas. And the number six ranked team in the country, so I read 35.5, so I was close. Kent State at number eight, Wisconsin. Wisconsin by 38.5, I have. And, um,. Their favorite 37, so point half off there. Purdue at number 12, Penn State at Penn State by 16 and a half. Penn State's favorite by 27 and a half. That's a huge number. That's way too big of a number, in my opinion. Number 14, Iowa at number 19, Michigan at Michigan by two. And it is Michigan by four and a half. So I um I guess I was just down on Michigan after that Wisconsin game. I judged them by that. But hey, um, not a uh, terrible guess at minus two. Number 21, Oklahoma State at Texas Tech. I have the Cowboys by 10 and a half, and they're favored by 10, so a half point off. South Florida at UConn. I have South Florida by 13. They're favored by 11. Um, TCU at Iowa State. of Iowa State by 9.5. They're favored by 4. That's a steal there. Maryland at Rutgers. I have Maryland by 19. It's 13 and a half, so that's another steal. Tulane and Army. I have Army by 8. It's Tulane by 3.5. Yikes. That's... In my opinion, the wrong team is favored in that game. Boston College at Louisville. I had this as a pick 'em. 
And Louisville's favored by four and a half. So, okay. I think the right team is favored. But I just wasn't sure how it was going to go and how I would have done it. I just said pick them in favor of Louisville pretty much. Um, Eastern Michigan at Central Michigan. I have Eastern Michigan by 11. And it's Eastern Michigan by five and a half. So that's low. Number seven, Auburn at number 10, Florida. Game days in Gainesville this week. I have Auburn by one. It's Auburn by three. Bowling Green at number nine, Notre Dame. I have Notre Dame by 38 and a half, and it's 45. Number 11, Texas at West Virginia. I have Texas by nine and a half. It's Texas by 11 and a half, so two points off there. Ohio at Buffalo. Have Ohio by 10. It's Ohio by three and a half, so too much Buffalo love a little. Western Michigan at Toledo. I have Toledo by five. It's two and a half. Ball State at Northern Illinois. I have Northern Illinois by 13. It's five. That's low. Arkansas State at Georgia State. I have Arkansas State by 11 and a half. It's seven and a half. So I overvalued the Red Wolves a little bit there. Baylor at Kansas State. I have Kansas State by minus three, and I meant overvalued in terms of a Vegas slot. Um, this game, I have the Wildcats of Kansas State Bear by three over the Bears of Baylor, and it's Kansas State by two. I just said even team field goal at home. That was my strategy on that one, but that was close. Illinois, Minnesota. I have Minnesota by 12 and a half. It's 14. Air Force at Navy. I have Air Force by three. It's Air Force by two and a half. Virginia Tech at Miami. I have Miami by 18 and a half. It's 13 and a half, so five points off. Marshall at Middle Tennessee. I have Middle by three. It's Marshall by five. Okay, interesting. I just thought that they'd give the three to the home team there, but mm, they clearly think Marshall's better. Memphis at UL Monroe. Memphis by... 15 and a half, it's 16 and a half, so a point there. Northwestern and Nebraska, I have Nebraska by nine, it's eight, one point off. North Carolina at Georgia Tech, I have UNC by 10 and a half, it's 10, half point off. Detroit, Missouri, Mizzou by 16 and a half, it's 24 and a half, so eight points off. Arizona at Colorado, I have Colorado by nine and a half, it's three. I can't believe that that number is that low. That is another bad line, in my opinion. But I learned my lesson with the Air Force game, though. But that was an overtime game that Colorado should have won. Western Kentucky at Old Dominion. I have WK by three and a half, and it's two and a half. Number three, Georgia at Tennessee. I have Georgia by 31. It's 25. So they're um, higher on chances that the Vols keep this close than I am. Race at UAB. I have UAB by and a half. Actually, no, that's what the line is. My guess was 14 and a half, and it's 8 and a half. So UAB, I guess, um, I overvalued according to Vegas. Um, next up, UMass at FIU of FIU by 14. It's 26 and a half. That's way too big. Number 25, Michigan State at number 4, Ohio State. This was a tough line to pick. I said Ohio State by 13 and a half. It's 20. So six and a half points off there. Hmm. Tulsa at number 24, SMU. SMU I have as 18 and a half, and it's 13 and a half, so five points off. Vandy at Ole Miss. I have Ole Miss by nine and a half, seven. Cal at number 13, Oregon. I have Oregon by 13. It's 18. Pitt at Duke. I have Duke by three, and it's Duke by five. Liberty at New Mexico State. I have Liberty by nine and a half, and it is six. UTSA at UTEP. I have UTSA by three, and it's a pick. It actually opened that UTSA by two and a half. Oregon State at UCLA. I have UCLA by nine and a half. It's five and a half. San Diego State at Colorado State. I have San Diego State by ten and a half. It's seven. Number 15, Washington at Stanford. I have Washington by twelve and a half. It's fifteen. Number 16, Boise State at UNLV. I have B- or Boise State getting ten and a half. I almost said BC. That was a mistake. Um, And it's BC or... BSU by 24. That's a big number at UNLV. UNLV is not that bad. Yikes. Okay. Best bet of the day brought to you by DraftKings. Some interesting choices to go with. Baseball's over, so that's disappointing. So instead, I'm going to just do what I think the best play is in the Steelers game, and that is the money line. Because 
You never know what these backdoors cover. It could be a field goal game. It might be an ugly game. You never know. So just take the Steelers on the money line tonight. It is minus 182. And I'd wager a dollar on it, pay out of $1.55. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping that Monday night game. I'll pick the NL wildcard game tomorrow. I'm going to have some guests on. My buddy Doug Sarabo is coming on about an hour and a half from now. We're going to preview the hockey season and talk about um, the baseball playoffs a little bit as well as the NFL through the first four weeks. Um, Tomorrow, John Butchacross is going to come on. We'll preview the hockey season with him as he is willing to join us tomorrow. Um, We're going to have Derek on tomorrow to talk hockey as well. And maybe Jeff Maglicetti at the end of the week, maybe, to talk WNBA Finals, hockey, baseball playoffs, NFL, and a lot more. And I hope you guys have a great night, everybody.